Hey everyone, it's Will. Now we're gonna build up on top of the previous tutorial that we did with the simple editable grid. And what we want to do today is to have an editable grid that is able to edit the details of records from a record type. So essentially here, we've retying a record type that we've created into an edit editable grid. And on top of that, we're writing to the database directly by using a button and using the smart service writes records. So let me just show you what the finished product will look like. Here we have a very simple editable grid. We still have the same functionality to be able to remove rows and also add rows here. So that's pretty simple. But then what I can do is actually write to the database. Now, if I click on this here, I'm gonna have an issue because this is not validated. There needs to be a value here. So if I remove this, I should be then able to write to the database. And now we have, we can see here that this has been saved to the database. And then what I can do is I can remove and delete directly into the database my records that I've just created, and then it gets updated. So we're gonna go ahead and create all of this. Um, we're gonna be following the steps that are available in this list. You have it in the description if you want to take a look at it. Um, just before we start, a couple of assumptions here. I'm gonna assume that you already have an employee record type, uh, which is very simple. First name, last name, email, phone number. So I'm not gonna go ahead and create it with you. I just already have it here. So a very simple you know, data model here, all fields are text, very simple. We're gonna call it EG for editable grid, employee. All right, so let's go into, let's the assumptions done. And if you were working, we're starting from the editable grid from the previous video that you can find here. If you, you know, uh, I would encourage you to watch this, the, the editable grid, basic editable grid before going into this video because uh, we're basically starting from the finished product of the previous video here, all right? So let's go into step one and step one is gonna be very simple. We're gonna go ahead and make the editable grid work with the employee record type. So there's a couple of things here that we want to do. Just remember what we did with the add row link. It's a dynamic link that adds a map. And a map is not specific to a record type. It's kind of like a, you know, a very flexible data structure. So we don't want to keep this. What we want to do is actually replace this with our employee record type and with a constructor. So that's why we're putting the parentheses here is to be able to add a constructor to that. So we're adding uh, one new employee, but th this time it's like an actual record type uh, data type to the list of data. And then what we need to change is all of those uh, references in the fields. We need to just basically change them to use our uh, record type fields. So here I'm just putting the brackets and then inside I'm putting the fields that correspond to it. Another thing that we want to do as well is to make them required because we're going to be writing value data to the database and we want to make sure that we're requiring those values. Additionally, we can also put an input purpose here for on those text fields if we know what this text field is going to be used for. But really the most important piece here is the required because we'll make sure that we don't write anything if there is a missing value because otherwise our data might be bad in the database and we want to avoid that. So that's just step one to be able to have all our, our editable grid work with our details here. And if I actually try to click on new employee, I'm gonna be able to actually save the data. So that works. Step two now, we want to make sure that we have a button that allows us to click and say writes records directly and so that we can save the values. So what we'll need to do is just to wrap the editable grid within an array because here in our structure here, we have local variables, but we can't really add any components at the bottom. We want to want to add a button button array layout, but we, we can't do that because it's, you know, it's not uh, an array here. So we'll just add curly brackets here around the grid layouts, and then we'll be able to actually add an array of buttons. So a button array layouts below our grid layouts. It's very simple. Let's add a button here in our arrays of buttons, and it's gonna be a write to the database, and we're gonna make it just a style primary. This doesn't really matter. You can you know style it accordingly. Um, you know, you wanna probably, if it's one button, you probably wanna make it pop a bit more. And then what we'll make sure of is that, um, you know, we've put the null, the input fields to be required so that there is always value. What we'll make sure is that this button validates. That means it will check that required fields are full. And if it's not, it's not going to basically do anything. So that's something we want to make sure of. So we validate is to be true. 
And then what we'll do is we'll say that this button is supposed to, when we click on it, write records, and it's gonna write the records local bank data. Write records, you just need to pass it on a list of records or one record, and that will write it to the database um, through the write records smart service. So very cool. This is very simple here. We don't need to do anything else. And then what we wanna make sure of is that when it is successful, so when the write is successful, we actually overwrites our local bank data with the updated records. The reason for that is that our database is assigning IDs because it's auto-incrementing the IDs and we want to actually get the IDs back from uh, our database. And so here, what we want to make sure of is that John Doe, I'm going to put some, uh, you know, fake email here and then some phone number and be able to write to our database. And I can't see anything here, but you know we're we're going to assume that it's saved to the database, and we can make sure that we can verify this by looking at the data. And in our local variables, if I open one, I'm going to see that I have ID seven. I've already started to put a couple of those in the database. That's why ID is seven. But yours will probably be ID one. All right, so that's what it is. We've tested the implementation. That works great. Now let's go to step three. And now what we want to make sure of is that there is a bit of a user experience flavor to it where we add an icon to say, hey, this uh, row has been written to the database. So we're going to go ahead and actually add a column into our um, grid here. So the way we'll do it is we'll add a layout header cell. Now this is going to throw an error because we're missing a component. We now have, what does it say, six header cells or so six columns but we only have six com five components so that's why it's missing it's putting an error let's also add a grid layout column config to say that the width of that last column should be just very small because it's just going to be an icon and then we'll add the component at the end after our fifth uh, component and this will be a rich text display field and inside of this rich text display field what we'll do is add a rich text icon and that rich text icon what this will do is it will show only when the ID of the row of the record is not empty or not null. What this means is that if there is an ID, that means that the value has been written to the database. That's how you can actually know if there is, uh, you know, if it exists in the database. If I add a new employee here with a button, I will see that there is no, there's nothing here, there's none in the icon, which means it hasn't been written to the database. So that's, you know, just a quick indication of our list. But the problem here is that if I remove this one, this record here from my list, it doesn't really delete it from the database. So maybe I want to have a way to delete the record directly into the database. And as I'm putting here, by the way, in this disclaimer here, we're writing records directly, directly to the database. This might not be the good use case for you if you need to make sure that writing to the database uh, needs to be approved by a supervisor or someone who is, you know, who needs to just approve the the, the writing of the records into the database. Same thing for deleting. Maybe you can't just allow anyone to delete your records. So this is just a very simple directly writing to the database, but we'll also see in another video how you can tie this with a process model so that you can actually put a task um, for the, you know, to, to approve the kind of writing of the records. But end of the disclaimer here, let's actually go into the step four and in step four, what we'll make sure of is that we have a way to delete the records in that have been written to the database. And the way we'll do that is actually instead, so you see here this icon in the fifth column, it can remove something, it can remove just one row into my data, but actually what I wanna do is have a way to delete the records in the database. So the way we'll do this is actually by making sure that this close icon here is only shown if the ID is null, that means that the record has not been written to the database. So this one here hasn't been written to the database because we, we haven't written to it. And in, if, if, the, if the record has been written to the database, we'll actually show a different icon. So we're gonna wrap this rich text icon here that we have with uh, an array. And we're gonna add another icon here, which will be a trash one to just you know say that it's actually uh, deleting the records in the database. And we'll make sure that it's only shown if the item, if the ID of the record is not null, which means that it's been written to the database. And here you can see my first record has been written to the database. So it's showing the trash icon. Otherwise, it's showing the close icon. 
And what we'll do is that the logic will be a dynamic link, which I will be able to click on. But what I'll do is that the logic, when I click on it, will be a delete records. And delete records, I just need to pass in just the FVBank item, which is corresponding to the records, and that will delete the uh, database. But what I need to make sure of as well is that I update the local bank data. Otherwise, it will be deleted from the database, but not shown, you know, it won't be reflected on the grid. So what I'll do is that I actually put an on success here to say that if the deletion of the records is successful, then save the data, but remove the date, you know, remove basically the item in my in my list of data. And that's the same logic, by the way, the on success here. This is the same logic as we have in our close where we're just removing one item from the local variable data. Uh, so you can see here, this is the same logic here. We're just going to write it in a different way with a being save. Cool. So that's if we can click on here, we can try it. Let's try here. That actually removes it. And I can also use the close here to be able to remove it. So, you know, this is a good implementation. Now we could enhance it. For example, you know, we can't really access um, records that have been written previously in the database. So maybe I have some other records in the database. Um, you know, you could improve it in a couple of different ways. What we'll do in the next video is to make sure that we use this editable grid and put it as part of a process model, which will be probably more realistic in real life. But at least here, you saw kind of the logic of being able to go back and forth between, you know, deleting a record, removing a record, um, and those different use cases. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.